Okay, so uh, we'll dig in. I mean, similar, we're similar that, I mean, this is kind of the nature of the summer months, which is not a bad thing. A uh, little bit of a slow time, kind of lull time. So if, if we need the full hour, as always, we will absolutely take it. And if we don't, we'll, uh, we'll cut out. Um, the big, um, you know, hopefully everybody tuned in for the, um, the borrowing presentation that I gave with Matt Mulhern last Thursday evening. Um, and if you didn't see it live, hopefully, you, you got the recording, but that's kind of the, the focus right now for this time of year. Right. So, so again, hopefully you guys had a chance to either tune in live. Uh, for the presentation we did last Thursday or had a chance to watch the recording and go through the slides, but we can expect to get bills for most colleges in and around July 1st, due in and around August 1st, just like everything that's fluid. Every college is different. Some schools are a little bit before, some schools a little bit after, but more or less, give or take about two weeks. Uh, that's how it tends to work for these fall semester bills. So now we're deciding, okay, how are we actually going to pay this, right? If we have resources, when do we use what? Or are we going to set up a payment plan with these colleges? Um, you know, if we have to borrow, what's the best way to do that in terms of student, parent, both? Do we use the federal government? Is it a state program? Is it the private sector? Uh, we spent a lot of time going through alternative options. Um, so again, hopefully you all had a chance to tune in. And I think today that's kind of the subject matter, I would guess, uh, for, for questions uh, for you class of 2021 students, parents, and families. So um, I'll kind of leave it open as always. Any, any questions, please put them in the directly in the Q&A. You can remain anonymous if, if, if you'd like. Um, you know, so ask anything as granular as you'd like. Uh, but Bill, I don't know if you have anything to add that was kind of what was top of mind for me this week yeah no not much more to add um you know as we get to this time of year piggybacking on what you said a little bit of a lull and um i think that's okay kind of enjoy the lulls we try to coach that um be mindful for you know seniors wrapping up one congratulations to um you know kind of formalizing how you're going to pay the bill Leverage College Aid Pro and the How to Pay tool um, to help you kind of get there. Uh, certainly review the recording that was sent out in terms of when to use what. Um, if you're borrowing, make sure you're shopping around for the best rate. You know, uh, if you call the financial aid office, they're going to tell you to go take a plus loan, um, which maybe at the end of the day is appropriate for your family, but there are other options out there. So make sure you're, you're shopping around for, um, you know, juniors wrapping up. Um, you're going to start to, you know, pro probably ramp up, you know, the college process. And if you're kind of a member here and you have access to college aid pro, you're going to start to do your, um, uh, you know, start really getting into your college search. You probably have some schools on your list. You know, this is where we want to be mindful of costs. Of course, we want to uh, be looking for schools and shopping for colleges with, you know, major and how far and how big. And, you know, we, we, we want to check those boxes for sure, but um, we don't want to go in blind in terms of, um, you know, what are they potentially going to cost us? So, you know, really start to spend your time putting your schools in, um, leveraging the advanced search, um, you know, things like that, start to build your budget, um, in terms of the pre-approval, you know, what, what is it that your family truly can, um, you know, put out there for paying for college. And because many times that's a far cry from what the government or the private schools think that your family can afford to pay. So really start to formalize strategy now, and then that really helps through the summer. And then you're ready to rock and roll come September, October. Um, so just kind of trying to speak to two audiences here, both the, uh, the seniors uh, that are wrapping up, the juniors that are wrapping up. Um, you know, uh, one is at the goal line. The other is at the, the one yard line. Um, so, uh, you know, being proactive is, is really the, the strategy um, and, curious if any anyone has comments on on their experience and 
you know, things like that. But that's just some tidbits for uh, for each side of the coin there. Yeah, we got a question in the Q&A that I put, uh, that I answered back for the link for the uh, borrowing and paying session that we did uh, last Thursday. So you have access to, uh, to to that. It's pretty robust. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's long because it's a, you know, important subject, right? And a, and a hard subject because there is no universal solution. Hey, here's the best way. Here's the best way to pay and or borrow for college. So uh, we kind of speak to everybody, regardless of what spectrum you're on. But yeah, to Bill's point, we got some some juniors or some class 2022 and class 2021. So if any of our experienced class of uh, 2021 families and parents have uh, have words of wisdom for those about to tackle the process the, the, themselves, if you could go back in time a year from now and give yourself any advice, uh, what would it be? That's something we always try to. Uh, tell our, uh, you know, our clients um, so they can help those that are, that are about to go through this quite a whirlwind of a process as, as, as you all know uh, by now. I think a, um, another, uh, or, or, or an important piece that's, that's relatively new when it comes to borrowing is that Generally speaking, um, not every state has a borrowing program, but those that do tend to be pretty competitive. Um, you know, this year in particular, just about every state program is a decent clip more um, uh, better in terms of lower rates than than the uh, than the federal government than the, than the plus loan. But generally speaking, for, in terms of state programs, you can only use your state program where you live if you have one. Or if your kid goes to school out of state, if they have a state program, you're allowed to use that program. So, for example, I'm here in Mass. If my kid goes to UVM, for example, University of Vermont, uh, she would be able to use the VSAC program. That's the name of, of Vermont's program. I put in the chat section this Rizla.com. Rhode Island is the only state, and this is pretty new, that you can take advantage of their loan program regardless of where you live and regardless of where your kid goes to school. So for families that have to borrow, we're always uh, advising that they at least check out their program because, again, it tends to be a, uh, a pretty competitive one, and, and it is this year. Um, so here's an anonymous tip that I think is uh, that I happen to agree with, and this is from a parent that is fresh off the uh, fresh off of having going th through this, right? So as a, a 2021 parent, here's a tip for you 2022 parents. Do not apply to too many schools. There's so much information to keep track of. There are so many dates and deliverables that it can be very overwhelming. Work hard to create the right list of eight or so schools. No need to be applying for 12, 14 or more as we've heard many people do, uh, especially with this test option. Could not agree more. It, you know, we make pretty firm recommendations to our clients and we, we don't tell them what to do, of course, but the firm recommendation is 10's kind of your, the tops we would recommend. As soon as we get into double digits, we, we really start to run into that problem that just got um, elaborated on here. You know, eight tends to be the sweet spot. Anything less than six, we get worried we're not giving ourselves enough options, but six to 10, eight being the sweet spot is, is a little bit of the magic number. You know, so many people with test optional said, hey, why not all apply to Harvard now? And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that uh, we recommend, right? And, and uh, certainly for clients that work hands-on with us. That's something that we get pretty hands-on with, but even just in these, you know, um, round table sessions, uh, we always encourage families, hey, give us your current list. Tell us a little bit about your kid and we'll kind of weigh in on uh, our, our, our knee-jerk reactions. We'll give it our, uh, uh, you know, instant analysis, even if it's not a family that's working with us in, in, in the one-on-one -on -one capacity. Okay, <clears throat> so no, another question here. Can we talk about what may be happening, if at all, with a government change of policy when we have two or more siblings in college at the same time? Because this will impact all of us with multiple children, even those starting college in the fall, beginning 2023. 
this is a major impact financially. Now, uh, one thing that I will do too, just in case you haven't, and I appreciate the question. So we've started a petition uh, to stop this from happening. The good news here is that it at the very least has been delayed. So now this is not happening until the 2024-25 uh, school year. Uh, and the implications are, this is not set in stone, this is just based on anecdotal conversations that we've had with uh, our contacts that, that work in financial aid. Um, they're thinking that families are gonna be grandfathered in as well. So for example, if, if you have a class 2023 student and the sibling rule went into effect during your child's junior year, for example, you should not be impacted in theory, right? I'm not here making declarations or promises that that is the anecdotal conversations that we've been having. Uh, this is also not going to be, this is only going to take place at schools that use the federal methodology. So most public schools, private schools, specifically that those require the CSS profile, technically called <clears throat> those that use the institutional or consensus methodology, they're going to ignore this rule. Um, it's, they're going to continue to do things the way that they have to date. So we're really only talking about public schools and private schools that use the federal uh, methodology. But the uh, again, that it just came out, as a matter of fact, last Friday, six days ago, that for that particular rule, the Department of Education is, is, is kicking that down the road another year still. And, you know, God willing, we make enough noise uh, in terms of our, our, our petition that we're working on by then that um, we um, th that we can actually have an impact and, and, and stop it from happening. So if, if you haven't already, uh, I would encourage you to shine uh, or to sign and share the petition that we started. I just put it uh, into the or, or let me make sure. Um, I just put it into the uh, uh, into the into the chat. Um, so again, please sign it and share it if if you haven't already. Uh, Bill, I don't know if you have any commentary in terms of the cap how to pay page. There seems to be a maybe a technical issue. Uh, let's see. So the how to pay awards report. <clears throat> um, I'll have to look into that. You have, does it, I guess my question would be, does that render on the screen? It's just an issue with the download. I don't know if we can get, uh, you can respond in the chat if you want. Um, Steve, I'll uh, I'll take a look. Yes, yeah, screen and function. I was just downloads a problem. All right, Steve, I'll I'll look into that uh, issue, address it with the programmer if needed. Um, so, uh, and I'll circle back with you uh, if I have any other questions. So I won't spend time on that now, but uh, I'll take a look at the look at that right after uh, we get off of here. So we'll sit tight for, for a few minutes, everybody. Again, I guess, like, like we said, there'll be a lull for, there'll be a lull for specifically for a class of 2021 families through, through a lot of the uh, summer months, you younger um, families will probably start to pick up the pace in terms of uh, putting together a school list and, and have some more questions around, around that front. And we'll have some more kind of, uh, material that, that we'll bring to the table proactively, but um, 
you know, like Bill said at the, at the top, it's not a bad thing to have a lull. We all want to embrace it. So uh, again, we'll hang around for, for a few more minutes. And if there's no more questions, we'll cut out early. But again, we'll stay as long as uh, <clears throat> if questions take us up to the hour, that's, that's, that's how long we'll be here. All right, Matty boy, you wanna, there we go. Okay, well, one, one more question here. Um, if we aren't getting any aid from a school other than federal government loans, why would they care if we got a private scholarship money, any possible issues penalties if we don't report it to them? I mean, listen, most folks, if you get a private scholarship, um, you know, and the check gets made out to you. Most families decide to keep that to themselves. Obviously, that's a personal decision. Um, most colleges will ask you to send in details of, of scholarships that you get locally or outside of the college. And there are cases when it can negatively impact your rate. Now, for this case, it's not going to change anything. If you send it to them, they're not going to reduce your loan or anything like that. So it's going to have zero impact. So you can send it in with no worries or you can keep it to yourself. <laughs> Uh, with no worries also, but it's it's not going to impact anything. The only potential time when reporting an outside scholarship can can hurt your award package is if you're getting need-based financial aid. But in this case, it'll have zero impact. Okay, all. I think we're going to cut out unless we got anything at the at the buzzer here. And uh, feel free, as always, post any uh, questions in the community. <clears throat> we'll make sure that we get those answered. And otherwise, we will. Uh, let's see. Let me actually check the schedule here. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll we'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>